do away with the, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich kind of feeling. If women were meant to be equal, we would have been equal. You know, that's one of the most powerful arguments against us. And think about the people who once walked this land, which what must have been the Iroquois Confederacy here, I don't know which of the nations, who lived a very, very different life thousands of years ago. A life in which uh, women controlled their own lives and their own fertility, in which uh, when the female elders chose the male chief, in which they controlled agriculture. It was a life about balance between men and women, balance with nature, much that we are just beginning to learn. And they were on this land where we are right now. We're just beginning to learn that they were the inspiration, or a major inspiration, of the whole suffragist movement, and a major part, perhaps the major part, of the Underground Railway. I mean, we, there's a whole level of history on this ground on which we now sit. And we don't even, rec we haven't even yet recognized it, despite the work of Sally Roche Wagner and many other people, we haven't yet recognized the roots of the women's movement and the suffragist and abolitionist movements in those native cultures. But they were the only places on this continent in which there was a set of values different from the hierarchical um, monotheistic uh, values that were coming in with the invading Europeans. And they knew each other, you know, they knew each other. They, the early suffragists had dinner uh, once a week on Sunday night in upstate New York with uh, the Seneca women. And, uh, you know, there was a culture in which women were equal and honored, and they could see that, and that inspired them. In so many ways, the, the, the suffragists and the abolitionists were supported by, inspired by native cultures. And in fact, even Marx and Engels they forgot the woman part, of course, but you know, but they, the ethnographer whose work inspired Marx and Engels was also writing about the Iroquois Confederacy. So on this, on this land on which we now are, we have the roots of feminism, we have the roots of socialism. It is here, it is in, they touched the same rocks, they walked the same, the same paths. Uh, the, if, if feminism on this continent is memory. Feminism on every continent is memory. Think about the Quay and the San in Africa, and think about Australia, and think, you know, in the pre-patriarchal, pre-monotheistic, pre-nationalistic times, there was a very different uh, sense of possibilities. Cooperation was the motto, not competition. There, there are many, many uh, ways in which we can gain inspiration and practical help from looking to this distant past. But not so distant when you think they touched the same rocks and they walked the same, the same paths.